You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 11th of April. India's Finance Minister Sita Raman slams West in negative perception of India. Taliban banned women from restaurants and green spaces in Afghanistan's Herat. And PM Hasina accuses US of seeking regime change in Bangladesh. And now for all the details, India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman, who is in the US for a week-long visit during a discussion over resilience and growth of the Indian economy, busted the negative perceptions of the West about India. Sita Raman urged the prospective investors to come to have a look at what's happening in India and said that perceptions are built by people who have not even visited on the ground. On being questioned about Western press reports over minorities in India, she highlighted India has the second largest Muslim population in the world and denounced allegations of the community being victimized in the country. India has the second largest Muslim population in the world and the population is only growing in numbers. If there is a perception or if there is in reality their lives are difficult or made difficult with the support of the state, which is what is implied in most of these write-ups, I would ask, will this happen in India, in the sense, will the Muslim population be growing than what it was in 1947? And in a veiled attack on Pakistan, India's permanent representative to the United Nations, Ruchira Kamboj, said on Monday that India is facing a serious challenge of cross-border supply of illicit weapons by means of drones. Speaking during a UNSC session, Kamboj asserted that certain states with dubious proliferation credentials that collude with terrorists should be held accountable for their misdeeds. She further said that the export of weapons and military equipment in violation of international law exasperating geo political tensions cannot be ignored. For example, the rise in volume and quantity of the small arms acquired by terrorist organizations remind us time and time again that they cannot exist without the sponsorship or support of states. In our context, we are facing a serious challenge of cross-border supply of illicit weapons using drones. And in defiance of the order by the Supreme Court, Pakistan's Finance Minister Ishaq Dar has said provincial snap elections are not in country's national interest given its economic turmoil and security situation. The comments from Dar came during a parliament session on Monday where he put forward a financial bill to seek a vote on whether to approve the election funding of 21 billion Pakistani rupees ordered by the apex court. He suggested the elections should be held together in all provinces and national seats saying that would reduce logistics and security expenses. The comments have raised the risk of constitutional deadlock to compound the country's political and economic upheaval. The Supreme Court, in a victory for former Prime Minister Imran Khan, had ordered snap polls in the most populated Punjab province to be held on May 14th and said the date could be agreed later for the northwestern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province pending some technical issue. Well, the frequent price hike of essentials has made life difficult for people in Gilgit, Baltistan during the holy month of Ramadan. It has become difficult to even arrange meals twice a day, especially for the poor, a report. People across the illegally occupied region of Gilgit, Baltistan are dreading about hike in prices of food, fuel and other essentials, which have put a pressure on household budgets. A local said the poor are left to rely on free food distributed during community gatherings to break their fast during the ongoing Ramadan month. It has become extremely difficult to even arrange meals two times a day. जो रोजदारों के लिए जरूरत की चीजें होती हैं वो बिल्कुल उनकी कुत खरीद से बाहर है एक मजदूर की 800 की मजदूरी है आप देखें यहां पर 800 की मजदूरी है अगर खजूर आपको एक किलो खजूर वहां पर आपको 700 रुपए का किलो मिलता हो तो फिर किस तरह जो है ना वो मजदूर रोजा रख सकता है लेकिन बयानत की हद तक को कह रहे हैं कि इस साल जो गंदम पे जो कट लगा था जो कटकी हुई थी वो पूरा आ जाएगा लेकिन जब महीने के आखिर में डल हजरत जब लेने वहां जाते हैं तो फिर वो मिलता नहीं
There have been several protests over unfair taxes being imposed and cut in subsidies for food and electricity, but all in vain. Locals blame the Pakistan government for being both negligent and systematically discriminatory towards the people in Gilgit, Baltistan. The Taliban on Monday barred entry of families and women into restaurants with gardens or green spaces in Herat province. The decision came after religious clerics complained of mixing genders in such places, reports have suggested. Afghan officials said that the curbs have been brought in place because of gender mixing or because women allegedly are not wearing the hijab, where such premises remain open to men. It was the latest in a slew of restrictions imposed by the Taliban since they took power in August 2021. They have barred girls from attending schools beyond sixth grade and women from universities and from most types of employment, including jobs at the United Nations. Women are also banned from public spaces such as parks and gyms. Moving on, Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and a harsh rhetoric in the parliament has accused the United States of seeking a regime change in her country. The criticism comes as Washington has pulled up a party, the Awami League, on issues related to human rights. Local media reports quoted her as saying that the U.S. wants to bring such a government here, scraping democracy, which would have no democratic existence. Several former and current leaders of Bangladesh's paramilitary rapid action battalion were sanctioned last December by the U.S. for alleged enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings on behalf of the government. In her speech, Hasina also criticized Bangla language newspaper Prathom Alu, saying it is an enemy of the Awami League, democracy and the people. Her remarks came after the National Daily allegedly published false reports on rising food prices. And scores of devotees carried and moved around a chariot carrying idol of the local deity into a pond in Nepal's Kathmandu to symbolically search for missing jewellery of their local deity during an annual festival. Take a look. Hundreds of devotees gathered near a pond in Nepal's capital Kathmandu recently to take part in Gehenna Kojne Jatra or Jewellery Finding Festival. The devotees carried a decorated chariot of goddess Tula Devi Vaishnavi and moved it in the pond to symbolically search for the missing jewellery, which the legends say was lost by the goddess when she was swimming with her sisters in the sacred water body. <laughs> The festival is celebrated for a week and on the main day, the chariot is taken around from the Bula Water Temple to the temple in the Hadigon area of Kathmandu that houses many other ancient monuments. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.